<laughs> now I get it. Japan, the country I have visited six times, far more than any other place, and I'm still not tired of it. It's quirky, it's beautiful, and unique in many ways. My friends and family have asked me, what is it about this place that I like so much? In this video, this gaijin, or foreigner, will show you the things she loves about Japan. Everything from the obvious to the strange and tiny things that probably only make her happy. We are going to start with the food. Japanese cuisine is known all over the world, with sushi probably being the most famous. Let's take a look at a few delicious options that go beyond rice and fish wrapped in seaweed. I'm going to be trying monji today, which is like okonomiyake, which is a Japanese pancake I really, really like. But this is going to be a more watered down version that has more of a cheesy consistency to it. Still the same things, vegetables and meats with a little bit of batter inside, except we'll see how it tastes all watered down. Cheers. Sugoi. Scraping this stuff up like this, all the little almost burnt bits, actually really some of the best parts. Next we head to a noodle shop where you choose your menu outside, then bring in a printed ticket to redeem your meal. You to get more authentic of this, we're at a stand-up only restaurant here. This is pretty authentic local only. Don't you dare forget to slurp your foods here. The chef will take it as an insult that you do not like the food he prepared for you if you don't. And yes, drinking from the bowl is completely acceptable here. I am definitely the only foreigner in here. I love it. Finally, we visited a restaurant where you didn't really quite know what you'd be having when you walked in because you had to catch your own fish. So the idea is that we go downstairs and we fish up a fish, and depending on which fish we catch, yeah, yes. we can choose any of these. Yes. But we don't necessarily choose the fish, the fish chooses us. <laughs> so, you're right. This is kind of cool, you don't really know what yeah, you're going to have. Very interesting restaurant. Yeah. Alright, pick the rod. Pick this one right here. So I'm going to give you some shrimp. Or epi, as they call it here. Yeah, epi. Let's try our luck. <laughs> there we go. I caught my flounder. Yay! We ordered appetizers while we waited, like kushikatsu, or fried vegetables and fish on skewers. Got things you normally don't get back home. This is lotus root, and it's quite tasty. Love it, you cook the scallops right there in their shells and their juices. That's awesome. Our flounder tempura has arrived. Perfectly tempered shiso leaf. It's almost like they wanted to remind us of the little guy that I just caught. Mm -hmm. I found the sashimi preparation to be a little morbid with its little face looking at us while we ate it. Other than that, this restaurant was amazing. This wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Kaizen Zushi, which is its own experience. You start with checking in, and the computer tells you what table to go to. The rotary looks typical to that of what you'd find in the US, carrying around familiar favorites. So this is mackerel. This is called a sukiyaki roll. Yep. But if you want something specific, you can use this tablet to customize and place special orders as many times as you want. When your items are ready, the tablet will alert you to look up at a private delivery track separate from the rotary below. Whee! So this is salmon with yuko type of egg. You deposit your empty plates here, and with every five plates, your tablet plays a cartoon to determine if you win some special prize of some kind. Something small, like a toy or piece of candy. Now this is something I don't get to have very often. This is abalone sushi. I don't really have this at home, so I'm excited to see this. I think it's the sukiyaki marinade, right? Yes. And the fish sukiyaki that's in marinade. here. The clear winner for me was the sukiyaki roll. The marinade is amazing. My favorite of the lot. We all left completely stuffed. This next thing that makes me happy is... Vending machine culture. You might think, vending machines? Why? 
Well, they're literally everywhere. Sure, they sell chilled water, sodas, as well as warm beverages, note the red tabs on the screen. They also have fancy coffee machines, but they take it even a step further. You can also get ice cream, somewhat filling snacks and small meals, including pureed foods for infants and toddlers, even prepackaged meats. This is a beef vending machine. And yes, beef tongue is one of the things on the menu here. I'm not sure how I feel about beef out of a vending machine. Regardless, in a society that walks nearly everywhere, it's nice to not have to wait long to quench your thirst. But if you're looking for something more substantial, there are very easy options at every single corner. Convenies or convenience stores truly are convenient for when you're exhausted, short on time, or maybe you got off work late and still want a cheap nourishing meal. You can find familiar staples like sandals or sandwiches, breakfast pastries like strudels and scones, and so many beverages to choose from. They have several hot beverages to select from, including coffees, special teas, juices, even hot water. Don't worry, they have cold drinks here too. Good old Bacardi sweat. That's exactly what it tastes like. Of course, there's also ramen, udon, and instant noodles for days. Pre-cooked meats, vegetables, sushi, and plenty of ready-to-heat meals ranging from meats to veggies to salads. Always looking fresh, never questionable. My breakfast staple when here is onigiris, or crispy seaweed wrapped rice balls stuffed with a plethora of fillings to choose from that comes with packaging that just makes sense. This morning, I'm having an egg filling. Oh, I guess I must. The next thing I appreciate about Japan are the trains and the train stations. Maybe my randomness has lost you, but hear me out. The day-to-day -day travel experience is quite pleasant compared to what I'm used to. For status, there's never a question of how long you'll be waiting for your specific train, right down to the minute. Let's see if my 10-year-old passable card still has money on it. This card system they use not only doesn't ever expire, but they can be used for purchasing vending items or even storing belongings if you don't want to carry them. A receipt is being issued. Be sure to take thank you for using. Communication is great if there's a hang up on a specific line and they even tell you why. But the part that I enjoy most, the train jingles. When they go off, that's your seven second warning to get on or off the train before it goes, and several stations have their own unique jingle. This segues easily to a slightly different aspect of travel in Japan, the Shinkansen, or the bullet train. Select high traffic stations will give you access to these trains that travel as fast as 200 miles per hour to get you all over the country. Finding your way might seem intimidating as there are several tracks for different Shinkansens, in addition to the scores of tracks for local trains. Fortunately, most of the time things are well marked out in Japanese and English. Number 11, so we look up here, see which about car we get on, and car 11 is the one for us. Check out these amenities available here for normal class. This isn't even first. You have your own personal power station to plug into, a hook for your coat, a window seat that comes with not only an elbow rest, but also a quality window shade, and a tray table that is larger than any airplane I know. Side note, here's a glimpse of the bentos available for purchase before boarding. More substantial and tastier than most economy meals served on the airlines. Fish, looks like it's been steamed and tempura, we got some pickled vegetables, and ginger, and some yeah. rice and seaweed. I mean, this is perfect. It does come with chopsticks and a napkin. It's just far too easy to sit back and relax enjoying the views when this is your travel vessel. Random question. You ever wondered what it's like to use the toilet at 200 miles per hour? So a toilet. 
Before you know it, you'll be at your next travel destination. One of the things I did exclusively when in Osaka was being a little bit of a gamer fangirl. I fully admit that I was a player of Pokemon Red back when I was a kid, so of course I'd appreciate visiting a Poke Center. I knew it was going to be crazy. I didn't think it was going to be this crazy. Wow. While I appreciated the holiday themed items here, what struck me the most was the sheer number of plush Pokemon that were available, and showed me how much this game evolved since the black and white version that I played. Right across the way was the Nintendo Center, another childhood favorite of mine. I grew up playing that gold case Legend of Zelda, as well as the first three Mario Brothers, and the original Animal Crossing. The character themed items they had available here was astounding. Gotta admit, I really love this Luigi pillow. Kinda wish I bought it. But there were other places I wanted to spend money. I've been coming to this store since I first came to Japan in 2012. Tokyo Hands. Just so many things here that are uniquely Japanese. Particularly the stickers here. I'm a big scrapbooker and I love the products they have available here. I'm a little embarrassed to say how much I've spent on all these cute stickers here over the years. B-side label stickers are so whimsical and some of my favorites. You will not find anything like this at Michael's or on Amazon. They just don't <laughs> exist. Of course I had to visit the Christmas section. <laughs> Funny. That singing hat made me so happy, as did the Yogi Santa decorations. You just wouldn't find this in America. Uniquely Japanese. Let's not forget to visit the washi tape section. These are great embellishments for scrapbooking. Here's another random thing that makes me happy. Rando serus, or the traditional wooden backpacks Japanese children carry their belongings in. Very, very sturdy. Mm. Dorothy is very... And their decor is super cute. Speaking of cute, Japanese culture makes many signs, mm -hmm. notices, and other random things as cute or kawaii while cute making sign. the message as obvious as possible. This includes manhole covers. I really appreciate the detail they choose to put into a seemingly mundane everyday item. Yes, a few of the manhole covers even serve as advertisements. The next random thing I appreciate is politeness. You never have to ask for space to get up the escalator, or have crowding issues getting on or off the train. Or how there's nearly no litter. It's always so clean here. No garbage, everything swept and pressure washed. Or this. this. Absolutely floors me, but we went inside the store for ice cream <laughs> and he left the car running unattended at the side of the road and it's totally fine. That I I would never do that at home. I can't believe it's that safe in a big city to do that here. <laughs> Just a few of the random things in Japan you never need to ask for. They just happen naturally. The next small thing I love is the fake foods. The restaurants want to show you what you can expect if you dine there, so several places have fake versions of foods outside to help you make an informed decision. And it doesn't stop at just Japanese foods. This TGI Fridays even has examples. The foods. A huge thing about Japan that I love is their katakana alphabet that they use for foreign so words. That's a ramen shop. Ramen. Parking chiketo. So parking tickets right here. 
You have a big advantage if you can read this alphabet. You can deduce a great deal and make your way easier. Mansuri parking. So, monthly parking. For orange juice, it's orange. Orange. This is a little disturbing. Megu miruku. Yes, that's meg milk. Not only can you sound your way through Japan, you can speak your way through in some situations. Impressed? Don't be. Let's break it down. You can even play certain games if you can read it. Opening Pokemon oh, cards for no Jin. Let's see what we get for this one. If we get something good, I'll be very excited for you. Don Meru. Don Meru. Don Meru. Batada. Bakuda. Bakuda. Okay, that's cool. This is for all the marbles right here. Let's have my non Pokemon card playing Greece. ass. Greece. Have luck. Greece. Okay. This is interesting artwork. I like it. Well, it is a shiny card, as we can see here. Can I pronounce it right? Todoro. Todoroku. Todoroku. Tsuki. Todoroku Tsuki. Todoroku Tsuki. Oh, nice one. Nice job, nice job, yeah. We got a good one? To get that good card, my friend may have gone to a temple to ask for luck. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite temples to ask for luck at. We're in the Asakusa district of Tokyo today, which is one of my favorites. It's actually the first place in Japan I've ever been to. And it's where I really got appreciation for the way Japanese do religion. Soji is the name of it. And I've been here a couple times, at least every single time I've been to Japan. Looking forward to showing you a little bit of what I think is very special about this place. My favorite places in all of Tokyo, right here. It smells like flowers and incense. Gives it an ethereal feel to it right off the bat. Let's begin with Omikuji for fortunes. Omikuji, so this is one of the divination tools they use. What we're gonna do is we're going to put a coin right here. This special box right here, we're going to shake it and it's going to give us a chopstick. It's gonna be numbered one through 100 and whatever one comes out corresponds to the box that we get here. Roju-san, five, ten, three, so fifty-three. Let's see what we get. I did not get bad luck. I don't see the X. There's a kanji with a big X on it that means bad luck, but let's see what we get. Regular fortune. Okay. So they wish us a good fortune right here. <coughs> Kohei's gonna try his luck. Which one do we got here? We nine. got nine. So that is going to be right here. Oh, oh good luck. Die, and that's good. Big luck. There you go. The best possible fortune. Good for you. <laughs> now we could come here on another day and get terrible luck. So if we were to get a terrible luck fortune, you come here and you tie the bad luck right here to this, and then the priests will come and burn it for you and wish good wishes for you. This is that kanji with the X I spoke of that would indicate you got bad luck. They also have these charms called omamori and they can have a plethora of meanings. I bought this 10 years ago when I first came and I still have this exact charm in my car. But I think today I will buy wishes come true. And here we go. Here is my wishes come true. And that is the sect of Buddhism that there is. That is not a Nazi sign at all. In fact, that's been around long before Nazis ever were a thing. Get the incense smoke onto you before praying to invoke the spirits you want. We also have Emma here where you can buy these special boards, write your messages on the back and hope that they come true. I understand these will also be burned. And these are just beautiful. a quick down and dirty is some of the things that you can do when you visit a Buddhist temple in Japan. There's many other things you can do. There are a lot more involved and steps to take, but these are just the quick and easy things that you can do if you ever find yourself in Sensoji. Listen to that enthusiastic Olikuji shaking in the air. 
There's no real good way to segue into one of the last things I want to share, which is their high-tech toilets. This is one found in a typical Japanese home. The side control panel allows for seat temperature control, but the part I love so much is the sink above the toilet tank. In an effort to save water, you can just wash your hands with clean water as it goes into the tank. Why can't we do that at home? There's nobody in this bathroom right now. I just have to say, even the public restrooms are clean. Warm toilets, all the fixings. Japanese women are shy about the sound of urine falling into the toilet. So to prevent that, you can press a button that turns on white noise to mask the sound. And top to bottom privacy. Plenty of shelving and hooks for your stuff. Oh, that's cute. To wrap things up, I leave you with a rather funny architecture story that I love. Now this is a little bit of hilarious history right here. We are looking at the headquarters of Asahi Superdrive, and which to the left it looks like a frosty mug of beer, and to the right of it is supposed to be this black building with a uh, flame coming out of it. Well, unfortunately, two things happened. One. The architecture was that so you could not stand that gold thing up, otherwise it might fall down in an earthquake very easily. And number two, the fire department said they couldn't have that painted red, it was a fire hazard. So they decided to go with a gold weird thing that the Japanese call the poop building now as a result of that, and it just looks weird. Kyohei, do the locals like the this building? Poo. Poo. <laughs> it's a poo building. You'd think they do something with all the money they make, but I guess not. Thanks for watching this video of things I love about Japan. If there's a quirky thing that you love about Japan or Japanese culture, leave a comment below. Until then, enjoy me being a dork playing Taiko Drum Arcade to the Totoro theme, and I'll see you next time.